Yeah, I was just listening to the river on the way home today. I was like, oh, that's nice. very neat. I yeah. love that. Yeah. So what we do here is we record two segments. They're both 10, 12 minutes long. I do the intros and the outros. So I'll do the hello, welcome to the Valley today. We talk 10 or 12 minutes. We go to a fake commercial break. Then we come back and we do another 10 minutes, wrap up at the end, and we're done. All right. So, Sounds and Justin has sent me a PowerPoint. He has sent me <laughs> brochures. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> yeah. I have a whole lot of information. So yeah, I try yeah. to keep it lighthearted, conversational, and just, you know, things. I try to ask questions and talk about things that I think the people listening would want to know without getting too deep in the weeds. Okay. All right. So Let's see what we I, can do. I thought what I'd do is ask you a little bit about your background. Why did you choose to be a neurosurgeon? That kind of stuff. We'll talk a little bit about uh, what I've got here is we'll talk a little bit about the level four epilepsy center, why that's a big deal to mm -hmm. have one of those here in our area. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what your specialties are, who your patients are, just kind of generic stuff. All right. Sounds oh. good. All right. Well, let me write down the time and we will knock out the first 10 minutes and see how far we get. All right. Sounds good. Hello and welcome to the Valley. Today I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Thursday as you are listening to the show today. It is the third Thursday of the month. That means we are talking about your health. It is our community health partnership in partnership, of course, with Valley Health. And uh, the, the last month we talked with the chief nursing officers at Winchester Medical Center and Warren Memorial Hospital. And I joked with them that I hadn't talked to a brain surgeon yet. Well, lo and behold, Guess who we're talking to today? I have Dr. Lee Selznick on the Zoom screen pre-recording with me today. He is the Chief of Neurosurgery at Winchester Medical Center. He is the co-founder of the Virginia Comprehensive Epilepsy Center with Dr. Lyons, I understand, Dr. Selznick. He was on the show with me back last August. Oh, very neat. Yeah. And then you're also, of course, a neurosurgeon at Virginia Brain and Spine Center. All of that to say, you're a real-life brain surgeon. Mm -hmm. That's what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so my first question typically is, how is it that you decided this was going to be your specialty? And I got to tell you, I'm secretly kind of hoping that you watched like Frankenstein as a kid and thought, this is what I want to do when I grow up. Yeah, I, I definitely did watch monster movies, but I, I hope that was not my primary inspiration. Um, I did always want to be a doctor, though, not a Dr. Frankenstein, so to speak, though. Um, but I was always getting hurt as a kid. So I was in and out of hospitals, uh, quite a bit. So I always had a lot of respect for the doctors that were able to patch me up and, and make me feel better. Um, so I kind of knew that ever since I was, before I even went to school, I think. Um, and then it's just been an evolution ever since then. Uh, I went to, uh, to college, um, interested in neuroscience, um, with biology and psych psychology, uh, double major. Um, I thought the brain was, um, the most fascinating part of anatomy and of life. Um, philosophically and physically and uh, so that brought me to medical school and uh, and then medical school there's a big uh, um, division between medicine and surgery and uh, and that's the split between neurology and neurosurgery in the area that I'm interested in and uh, I'm, I'm very mechanically inclined I like to see problems think about them and, and try to fix them and neurology is really good with diagnosis um, and identifying problems and just with the state of affairs and just the way it is, it's just, it's hard to fix a lot of neurological conditions. Um, but when there's a surgical problem, um, there's a lot more hope that we can give people, um, for actually getting rid of problems or managing them much better. Um, so that's really what took me down that road. And I know we're going to touch a little bit on technology before we finish our conversation today, but I would imagine one of the big focuses of your practice is on epilepsy because that is, is that considered a brain disorder? Is it a disease? How is epilepsy classified? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a broad collection of different illnesses and conditions um, that are all defined by uncontrolled seizures. Um, so, um, it's, it's very broadly defined. And so any patients that have a seizure condition that's not controlled well with medication, um, that's where we start to think about surgical options for them. 
I was reading through some of the notes, my cheat sheet that I get, mm -hmm. and there was something on the list of uh, different things. It's called a neuro pace. And I saw that and thought, I wonder if that's like a pacemaker, but for your brain. What is a neuro pace and how does it help you treat epilepsy? Yeah, that, that's probably the easiest way to explain it. Um, just like the heart, there's rhythms in the brain and, and a seizure is an uncontrolled rhythm, just like you can have an uncontrolled rhythm in your heart. And so uh, um, technology has evolved and come a long way. And um, over the years and more recently, they figured out ways where you can pace the brain, so to speak, and try and override those abnormal signals that are causing seizures. Oh, I could totally use that for so many other things. You have no <laughs> idea. If I could get my hands on that technology, it would be yeah. the whole, the world would be a whole different place. <laughs> There's a lot of smart people uh, doing research on all sorts of indications for it. So some of the things that are listed under your name for special interest, brain and spine tumors. Brain tumors completely made sense to me. I never really associated someone who's a, who's a neurosurgeon with spinal surgeries as well. Yeah. How do those two connect? Yeah, I, I don't even think I even knew that until I did the rotation in medical school. And my mom didn't even know exactly what I did until a few years ago. So there's still things she doesn't really connect with, with what I do. Um, it's, it's, so we deal with anything surgical with the brain, the spine, and even the peripheral nerves. So like I was referring to my mom, she has carpal tunnel syndrome and she was dealing with it for years. Didn't think to tell me about it, even though that's something that I treat all the time. Um, so, so yeah, there's lots of conditions. And, and so there's a broad area of things that we can treat and, and I'm a general neurosurgeon. So I treat virtually everything within the brain, the spine and the peripheral nerves. Um, but then there's even a subgroup of neurosurgeons that will specialize within that, that will just do spine, just do brain, just do peripheral nerves, and do very um, eloquent surgeries for really complex problems. So functional neurosurgery, is that just like your basic <laughs> brain surgery? No, that's actually one of those categories of really of self-specialization. So so as we've grown in practice, we are, um, even though I consider myself a general neurosurgeon, I have a special interest, so to speak, in more of the brain um, areas. And one of that is functional neurosurgery, where it's really doing surgeries not to remove tumors or masses or fix um, lesions, but is to improve the function of the brain. So epilepsy is a dysfunction of the brain. So that's considered functional neurosurgery. And the other aspect of that is generally broadly classified as movement disorders. So Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, um, putting in electrodes in the brain to be able to stop someone from having uh, tremors. And would something like traumatic brain injury also sometimes fall into that category? It, it does in the um, acute emergency phase of things. So we deal with head traumas. We're, we're a, a level two trauma center. So, so we deal, and we got the highways going right past our, our hospital. Um, so we're very busy with traumas. Um, so we deal with the, uh, the acute um, consequences of, of closed head injuries and, and spine trauma as well. Um, and then there's a whole other aspect with the long-term consequences, which sometimes will fall to neurology to deal with post-concussion syndromes and, and things of that nature. And the, the Epilepsy Center at Winchester Medical Center, that's a level four center, which is a really big deal to have something like that in our area, isn't it? Yeah, level four is the uh, as busy and as complex a center as, as you have. And as you can imagine, epilepsy patients, it's hard for them to travel. They can't go travel two hours, three hours away for multiple visits, multiple surgeries um, in order to um, try and maximize the treatment of, of their condition. And so be able to do that locally here has opened a lot of doors for a lot of people in the area. So tell me about an awake craniotomy. Cra cra <laughs> You're going to have to say that for me. Craniotomy? Yeah. <laughs> craniotomy. Um, yes. Yeah, so Because um, I don't think I'd want to be watch, awake for that. You don't watch Grey's Anatomy, do you? I, no, well, so, yeah. So this is the thing. I watched ER. And yeah. that was as close to sometimes I'll catch an episode of like Chicago Med. But no, I, I think I've missed a whole thing by not watching Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, so, so one of the main characters was a brain surgeon, but unfortunately, due to the drama, they made it, everybody was life and death, and there was a lot of people that did not do so well on that show, so each time I watched it, I was very disappointed. <laughs> um, it, so it's amazing how, you know, brain surgery's come a long way in the 100 years or so that it's been done, and, uh, and, and, and it's become a very eloquent and, uh, surgery, so we can do very complex things um, without causing harm to the patient. 
So, so if someone has a brain tumor that's in the area of the brain that controls language or strength, um, without being able to test them while we do our work, we might remove those areas and cause a permanent problem. So with the right patient who can stomach being awake, um, <laughs> we can actually wake them up in the middle of the surgery, ask them questions, have them perform tasks, and know that we're safely operating around those areas. That has got to be the coolest thing ever. And I will tell you, I'm not one of those patients you could wake up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, ama it, it's amazing when, when you're dealing with what these patients are dealing with, as you can imagine, these are, you know, very dramatic situations, not unlike our TV show. Um, but um, when, when people, when push comes to shove, it's amazing what people can do and they do wonderfully through it. Well, considering the alternative and what their life is like prior to having a surgery like this. Yeah, I could imagine where someone say, you know what, I don't care what you got to do. Just make it yeah. better and let my life, let me have a higher quality of life. Exactly. Yep. I love that. Well, I'll tell you what, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I mentioned at the top of the show, we were going to talk a little bit about the technology because I know it has come a long way. Can we talk about how it used to be, but how you're doing things now in the next segment? Yes, Definitely. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation. We are pre-recording today with Dr. Lee Selznick. He is Chief of Neurosurgery at Winchester Medical Center. We're going to talk more with him about brain surgery when we come back in just a couple of minutes. I love a show. I don't have to That's, edit. Oh my God, you're amazing. You <laughs> like every show. <laughs> I was wondering if there's a chance to edit things. <laughs> Well, I was texting with the station owner this morning. We had a staff meeting this morning on Zoom and I'm uh, the, the hosting the radio show is my what I call my side hustle. So I'm not oh. even a full time staffer at the station. This is kind of all I do. My full time gig is I teach small businesses how to use social media and Facebook. Ah and all of that kind of stuff. And I also manage all of that for the station. So this morning I had to run a Zoom meeting, a Zoom staff meeting for the station, <laughs> explaining how our new website works. And huh. this is to a group of people who I swear to you, one of them a year ago came up to me and thought it was witchcraft that email came to his phone. <laughs> oh. So I texted, oh, no uh, yeah, I texted Andrew before we got started and said, hey, I need to chat with you later. I'm getting ready to jump on the Zoom with a brain surgeon, a brain surgeon, uh, total opposite from how my morning started. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So we'll talk about technology. Is there anything you want to make sure I ask you about? Is there something extra special? Do you want to tell me about a certain patient, anything like that you want me to start a conversation yeah. about? Probably, probably the um, two things that I want to make sure we, we talk about is just general spine care. Um, because that's most of what we do, and that's a big demand um, in the area. Um, and, uh, and maybe a little bit about the telemedicine um, with, with COVID. That's really gone a long ways where we can do remote visits with patients. They don't even have to travel out to see us. We can see them in their own home. Um, and uh, so that's opened up a lot of doors and, and the technology um, part okay. of things. So we just, we got a CT that's pretty amazing. Cool. All right. Yeah, that's what we'll do. And I have um, two friends that I know of that have had brain tumors and had them removed and they've grown back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. But they, they're they, still it, highly functional. It doesn't really, it has impaired their hearing mm -hmm. because they're like okay. right behind their ear. Yeah. It's probably an acoustic neuroma. It's a very common kind of tumor. Hard to completely remove. Yeah. Uh, Katie so. Tool that at, uh, owns the Apple House over in Front Royal. She has one. And has okay. had it removed twice. And then a friend of yeah. mine, Clint Pierpoint, he's a realtor over in Front Royal. He's had had it, it was removed, it grew back. And when he had it removed the second time, they nicked a nerve. Mm -hmm. And now yep. he, he doesn't yep. have facial. Yeah the, yeah, the facial nerve is right there. So that's the most common thing. So, but yeah, but uh, the gamma knife at UVA actually is it's fantastic for those kinds of tumors. So, uh, so that's something if they haven't looked into, they should consider. Nice. All right. Okay. So we'll talk about technology, general spine care, and then telemedicine. And then I have a stupid third grade question for you when we wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. 
Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Thursday. As you are listening to the show today, we are talking community health as part of our partnership with Valley Health. So we are on the Zoom pre-recording with Dr. Lee Selznick. He is the chief of neurosurgery at Winchester Medical Center. And we talked, Dr. Selznick, in the first segment a little bit about just the broad spectrum of types of surgeries, brain and spine surgeries that are available and that you're capable of doing now at Winchester Medical Center. Technology has come a long way. I know at least from the perspective of talking to some of the cardiologists at Valley Health and the lung doctors, robots, all of these really cool things that can now help you in surgery. Do you got cool stuff when you're doing brain and spine surgeries? Oh, yeah, we, we definitely do. And the technology just keeps improving. I keep watching my kids on their on their home computers with their virtual real, reality and all that technology. And that's the exact same technology that's coming to the operating room. It's amazing how um, video games have outpaced um, healthcare technology. Um, but that's exactly where a lot of it is growing and coming from. So, so yeah, we have um, what's called stereotactic navigation. So you can look at a computer screen and make three-dimensional models. Um, there's virtual reality that's uh, available. We don't have that um, here quite yet, um, but that's um, useful for some of the more complex things that we have. Um, and then, yeah, we have robots. We, I just had a um, demonstration yesterday, um, a, a machine called the Rosa, which would help us do stereotactic uh, epilepsy surgery with the robot. Uh, so uh, it's, it's amazing where it's going. And I would think that that is highly specialized. I mean, do you have to take other classes or certifications to know how? Because, I mean, you, you're you a, a surgeon with your hands. You got to now figure out how to operate this equipment to do the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the education never ends. Even though oh, I finished uh, residency 15 years ago, um, as the technology uh, changes, you have to learn and keep up with it. So same thing when I was in residency, the guys that were teaching me were telling me how they didn't do the instrumentation in the spine when they were in residency. That was all what they learned how to do afterwards. Uh, so it's a number of things that we learn. We do lots of courses and are continuing um, education all the time. Well, and I'm guessing that in another 10 years, you're going to have residents who are like, what do you mean there was no such thing as telemedicine 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. People actually had to come and see you physically <laughs> in order to have any kind of a diagnosis. That's not the case anymore either. Yeah, no, that's the most amazing thing with all the internet technology that's out there now and, and Zoom and, and Zoom meetings. Um, that, that's, that very quickly made its way into healthcare, um, especially with the past two years, uh, what we've been going through. So we've, um, we were even talking about it before then, but now it's, it's well established. So we have um, telemedicine options for all our patients. We can see anybody in anywhere in Virginia, anywhere that we're licensed um, via telemedicine. Patients can stay in their home. We can review their imaging. We can talk to them and counsel them and even make surgical plans based on the history and the studies that we see. Um, and that's so a really convenient. big deal. Yeah. Because I mean, you mentioned earlier that a lot of people who suffer from epilepsy can't travel. It's, it's difficult for them to drive long period. Well, they can't drive at all in most cases, but just traveling and being in a car for three, four hours to maybe go see a specialist. Now they can just jump on their computer and have access to one. Yeah. Not only is it inconvenient for normal people, everyday people without problems, but you think about the things that we treat and it's, it's, it's extremely difficult. So someone who has back pain um, or nerve problems, they can't sit in a car and drive two hours, sit in an office and wait two hours. Um, it makes a big deal. It, it just exacerbates their pain symptoms. Someone with a brain tumor or epilepsy, yeah, they just can't drive. So they have to get someone who can drive them. So it's, uh, it's opened up a lot more doors um, in the past two years for sure. Well, so let's talk about general spine care for a minute, because I, I joked with you during the break, not really joked, but I was telling you during the break that I have two friends that have had suffered from brain tumors, but having spine problems is a whole lot more widespread. I'll bet nobody listening right now has some, has never had a friend or a family member that has had some sort of back injury, back problem, something wrong with their spine. Yeah, ex exactly. So, so Fortunately, brain tumors are very rare, so it's, it's not an everyday thing. But back pain and neck pain, everybody at some point in their lifetime has it, and they certainly know people with neck and back problems. Fortunately, most people don't need surgery, but everybody needs a road or a pathway in terms of how to deal with it. 
Uh, so, so that's what most neurosurgeons spend most of their time doing if you're not ultra subspecialized. And, uh, and that's the, what we call the bread and butter of what we do. So is, is the neck and the back problems. And so um, it's really quite um, uh, a, a, a process for a patient to kind of navigate their way from having a back problem. Who do they see? How do they get better? And right now, it's, it's kind of like the Wild West. They might see a chiropractor, they might do physical therapy, might go to primary care, they might go to urgent care, they might get this done or get that done. And it's, it's really not done very well. Um, patients get lost in the shuffle. Patients that should have seen me a lot sooner than they do um, are delayed. And patients sometimes are seeing me within a week of symptoms when there's a lot of other things they could have done. So, so we've been working with Valley Health and are developing a comprehensive spine program um, where essentially anybody with a problem, um, they, they get filtered through our door, so to speak. So very easy to get in, be able to get an appointment within a week or two. Um, oftentimes, we'll start with a mid-level provider, a nurse practitioner, or, or, or a, a physician's assistant. But what they can do is they can do everything short of surgery. These are our, 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 our right-hand um, people that are experts on spine care. So short of needing or doing a surgery, they can order the right study, they can start the right medicines, they can get you to the right consults. And a lot of times you, people think it's their neck or their back, but it's actually their shoulder or their hip or something else that's the main problem. Um, so, uh, so we're hoping to make a big difference and get a lot more people uh, coming through our doors and, and getting better care. And I would guess too that people I've read where people that have had some sort of spine surgery come out of their surgery and immediately are just overwhelmed with the lack of pain and how it, that it's immediate. This isn't something that you're still stiff and you're sore and you got to kind of work out. It's an immediate response. Yeah. And, and what it comes down to more than anything is patient selection. Um, there's a lot of reports and information about back surgery. A lot of people are very scared of back surgery. A lot of people have had back surgeries when they didn't need it. And that's the problem. So neck and back pain are very hard to fix. So a lot of people have back surgery with standard degenerative changes in the back that that's just the way their back is. And you can't really make that better. Yet they, they seek out the care, they have a surgery, and then it's often very disappointed. And then they go tell all their friends and family how terrible back surgery is. Um, what they, the problem is they never should have had the back surgery in the first place. So, so we're, you know, what we would call very conservative practice. Um, so back surgery is always a last resort. And what it is really good for, it is really good for. So if someone has a nerve being pinched, it's like night and day unpinching that nerve. And, and that's where the patients get the benefit. And my brain just went blank. I had it all written out here and now my brain just went blank. We hear a lot about minimally invasive. This isn't even something either where you have to make a big incision or really kind of do a do something major to a person when they're having in either one of these or any of these kinds of surgeries either, right? Oh yeah, no, it's, it's very amazing again how things have gone over the past 20 years. So we can do big surgeries in very small ways, so to speak. So today I actually did a surgery this morning. Um, what would have been about a, maybe a six hour surgery and a giant incision in someone's back. Um, it was a fusion of a disc space and then what's called a decompression where you're removing the facet joints and then putting rods and screws. And I did it through a little incision this big. Wow. So, so it, it's really amazing. I have a patient um, scheduled a couple of weeks from now that needs a fusion and uh, we're working on doing it as an outpatient. Um, and, and a lot of centers are, are doing that. So that's, that's where things are moving. So, so we do um, virtually every spine problem that you have, um, we can take care of here in Winchester. We do what's called maximally invasive surgeries and we do minimally invasive surgeries. Um, we have inpatient um, facility here with a 400 bed hospital. And we have a beautiful new um, outpatient surgery center um, as well. So, so uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. We can take care of all of those problems. And just like bypass surgery, it used to be that after you had heart surgery, you had to be in bed for two or three weeks. You weren't supposed to be up moving around. Now I understand in a lot of these cases, like you just mentioned outpatient surgery, you're walking out of air or walking within yeah. a few hours of whatever spine surgery you may have had. Yeah, no, it's, I'd say about half of my surgeries are being done outpatient now. I'd say 80% of my surgeries that are done inpatient are just one, one night um, stays. 
So, so it's really made a, a big difference. Patients don't like being in the hospital, and so they can they can recover at home and do much better. Yeah, I've got to, I've got a husband who would feel really really guilty. So the longer I can stay home and whine, even if I'm feeling perfectly better, <laughs> and have yeah. him have to take care of me is always better than being in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we sometimes joke people can't hurt in the hospital; they can hurt at home. So might as well be at home. Right. Um, exactly. You can be you can be in your own bed. You can be comfortable. We can give you the same medicines and, and the same care. And so, I have the dogs but, but here. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously we don't, we don't kick people. I don't want people to think we're kicking them out of the hospital either. So when there's patients that need to stay and they have issues, they stay as long as they need to. Um, but but uh, nowadays they just don't need to. I will put links to all of the different types of things that we've talked about today up on the show notes page. So before we wrap up, I joked with you right before we came back from the break and said, I have like a third grade question. Why do I get a brain freeze when I drink a milkshake too fast? <laughs> that happened to me yesterday. So obviously I haven't figured that one out yet. So. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, he's going to tell me that it has nothing to do with the brain and that it's totally something else. And that it's called a brain freeze because blah, 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 blah. But I thought, you know what? I'm yeah. going to be a third grader for a minute. And I'm going to ask this very intelligent doctor who does this brain surgery, why I get a brain freeze when I eat ice cream too fast. <laughs> yeah, that probably is a misnomer. It should be a throat freeze. It's way back in the back of your throat. <laughs> There you go. Well, Dr. Selznick, thank you so much for meeting up with me and chatting about this. It's really fascinating work. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that we were able to have this conversation. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow. We are talking water clinics tomorrow. Vanessa Santiago, Santiago is going to meet up with me from the uh, Virginia Extension Office. We're going to talk about the water clinics that they are currently running across the Shenandoah Valley. So meet me back here tomorrow, a few minutes afternoon. We'll have all of the details for that.